college football imperialism is headed south of America to South America, home to the world's largest rainforest and river, college football is going to look and feel just a bit different down here. To be victorious in South America, teams will need to play by a couple special rules that will be sure to keep gameplay spicy and keep teams on their toes. We will be taking the games to Miami as that's the southernmost point in college football. Teams will have to work their way up through natural progression. In particular, this is running back focused as every team will start with their third string running back. You have to win the game to unlock the second string running back and then win the next game to finally get access to the first string. Lastly, a game changer, the poison ball. On the first fourth quarter touchdown, they have to lose that player for the rest of the game. Remember, the team that conquers South America gets to steal one player from other Big Ten schools for as many wins as they rack up. And that's not all. For the next stage, when the world goes to war, we get to bring two campus legends to the victor. So I'll need you all to drop some comments down below. Who's ready to get the party started? I know I am. Spinning the wheel of Big Ten teams, it's gonna start off with Indiana. So the first battle, starts with the Hoosiers. Hoosiers are gonna have to go to the left and up a bit. And who borders them the most in that direction is the Ohio State University. Third string running back for Ohio State and third string running back for Indiana. Not sure if any of you held on to hope that Indiana would get into this game because I didn't have any hope. I'll tell you that much. Ohio State dotting them up. But you know the rules and so do I. Marvin Harrison caught the poison ball and he's off the team now. That is only for this game, however. So don't be too concerned. You'll see him back in the next. Third and fourth team for the Hoosiers. They're down by a lot. I don't think we'll waste much time in this game as you already knew there wasn't much of a chance. Well, round one of imperialism on South America was rather predictable. Ohio State gets the win. And because of that win, they've quickly unlocked their second string running back, moving up the natural progression route. Purdue on the clock. Let's figure out where we're going to be headed. So to me, that means Nebraska rather than USC. Third string running back here for Nebraska, getting the carry and going nowhere. Down by 11. They were hoping to get a spark there from the running back and the defense for Purdue is too strong. Now, the funny part here for Purdue is that they have a receiver now at running back out there and they're slipping it out to the receiver. He's got good hands. Just can't get enough yards for the first. Nebraska needs to kick it up a gear here if they're trying to win this game and move closer to South America conquest. They will gladly take a penalty call that gives them a fresh set of downs as the quarterback just keeps it himself. What a big run. Okay, I missed the call, but the craziest thing just happened. Our third string running back for Nebraska just scored a touchdown. So he, in essence, got the poison ball and is out for the rest of the game. So I think that means a four string running back, in this case, cornerback with 90 speed takes his place. But that first down right there, honestly, just got them closer to sealing the fate. Two minutes to go. Card still slinging it, looking to get some insurance points. Third and four, if they can convert here, that spells good things, and they're short. There is an imposter among this Nebraska receiving core. A cornerback that's starting at running back is out there too. Hurrying up to the line, trying to save as much clock as possible. Fourth and eight. Here we go. All on the line. Nebraska going for a big one. Intercepted. Purdue comes away with the big play when it mattered most. And that was all she wrote in this one. Purdue advances. Nebraska's knocked out of here. Therefore, Nebraska's a one and done and Purdue has unlocked access to their second string running back. Onward and upward from here. Next up, we got UW, the national championship runner up. Will the Huskies get right when it comes down to South America? And Jeesh, we got fireworks already in this one. Washington, the Ohio State. Fourth quarter action. Ohio State going for it here on fourth down. Down, and it's snuffed out by Washington. The Husky pack swarms all over him. Huge stop, down by a touchdown. We are only in game three of imperialism, but this is literally a championship caliber matchup in its own right. This team is filled with weapons as evident from the NFL draft. There's the third string running back getting a tote. Number 20, Tybo Rogers there in the read option. 85, the big tight end is loose all the way down to the one. A touchdown away from tying this one up. It is Tybo on the carry. The third stringer couldn't do it. Second and goal, speed option, Penix drop. Third and goal, Ohio State has one of the toughest defenses out there. Can they make the stop today? It looks like it. It's a double-edged sword here. Fourth and goal, you definitely want to score, but whoever scores, it's a poison ball. In this case, Tybo and no one is scoring. Ohio State turns it over. Third and 13 for the Buckeyes. Will this be the carry to get the first? So go ahead and give the Huskies another shot here with just about a minute 30 to go. Tybo's coming alive. This is a star-studded roster, no doubt about it, but is it enough to beat the Buckeyes? And what a throw. Penix Jr. to McMillan there on the run across his body. 
That was a sweet lefty pass right there, my friend. That was really good to see for the Huskies. Big third and goal right here. It's another draw. Tybo has not been efficient. Or sorry, that was fourth down. I didn't even realize. So I didn't even catch that. That was fourth down. They turned it over and that was game. The Buckeyes led by Kyle McCord, who's at Syracuse now. Uh, they are going to go on to the next step. Absolutely massive victory there from Ohio State, and they're the first team to unlock their first string running back. Husky fans, that was hard to watch, I'm sure, so I apologize. Scarlet Knights are headed down south. The Scarlet Knights are headed to the left, which, okay, I don't even know why I'm spinning. There's only one team that borders them, so we're going to play Wisconsin. Yikes, this is a scary sight indeed. 42-0, to zero. Wisconsin up huge. There is not a lot to see here. Rutgers, honestly, just playing for pride at this point and not going too well this is more than likely a read option yeah speed option close enough touchdown so wait that's gavin the quarterback we have to bench him for the rest of the game can you tell it wasn't going to make a difference anyway badgers take this one decisively and yeah they're just getting warmed up it looks like seems like wisconsin's got the depth they need at running back now they've unlocked the second string and Rutgers are eliminated one game at a time out here and Wisconsin, however, is back in the limelight. Just like the last one, I'm not even going to spin the arrow. Look, there's only one way they can go, and it's up to Michigan State. Spartans third and six, looking for the first. They got it. But yeah, can you tell there isn't too much to celebrate here for the Spartans as they're down big again? Or I should be saying Wisconsin up big again. Three running backs in the backfield, all 85 plus. So it's kind of funny. It doesn't really make a difference here. And even with those good running backs, it clearly didn't make any difference in this game as Wisconsin is bodying these guys by four touchdowns. Antonio Gates Jr. with that last catch, so that was pretty cool to see. However, Wisconsin is just this good. Michigan State fans know they're eliminated from this imperialism, so let's try to at least get them a touchdown. Come on, guys. Hopefully, this is the play right here you can hang your hat on as a Spartan fan. Rewind that and let's play it back. Hopefully, this is the play you can hang your hat on. Fourth down. Can he do it? This is hysterical. Coach is literally calling timeouts here. It's third and goal. They do get the touchdown after all. Hauser to the house. And Hauser back home to Michigan as Wisconsin keeps the dream alive out here in South America. Tanner Mordecai, what a game. Okay, Wisconsin started at the bottom of the continent and slowly but surely make their way up. With that, Wisconsin has no restrictions anymore. Just got to watch out for the poison ball, sending the Lions to the south. And that arrow is pointing directly at Illinois. Illinois down by 11. However, they are in the red zone here and they're going to read option it, pass it back out to the third string running back who shakes a guy trying to make the Nittany Lions look like children. But Illinois is going to need a lot of help. And the second string running back did come in as a change of pace back and score. And because Reggie loves score, he took the poison ball and he's off to the gulag. Penn State holding on to that three-point lead. Drew Aller is just going to step up and lose the ball. Big sack fumble. Illinois has just changed the game, flipped it on its head. Touchdown, big man. Love to see a big man touchdown. Randolph, absolute game wrecker right there. So Aller's forced to get to work, and he needs to work quick. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a quarterback named Bo, so that means Aller got injured earlier in the game. Well, Illinois fans, this is your time to capitalize then because you don't get an opportunity quite like this, especially in imperialism. You definitely still got to be good if you're the backup quarterback at Penn State. Third and nine, looking for a play here to get all the yards back, and it's going to be fourth and short, but this is go-for-it territory. Nittany Lions fans hold your breath it's about to go down and you get it penn state wants to fight and live another day get aller back and oh Bo, baby all the way gonna do him like that huh Bo went ahead and popped off that last drive just a minute to go it looks like a slip screen here on third and 12 will that be enough leeway got really really close one yard to go will they get it it's a read option in a Flicks it out to number two. The running back picks up the rest. Folks, this game is not over yet. Illinois wants to score, and that is going to get them that much closer. What a dot. Five yards away from pay dirt. Can they muster up what they need? And is that an interception? No way. Able to kneel out the rest of the clock. Bo and the Penn State Nittany Lions came to town and did what they had to do. Now you should be able to get Drew Aller back in the next, I'd imagine. Man, so Illinois almost had it. The show must go on, and that show is headed back to Purdue. Already won their first challenge. The second challenge, however, is none other than Ohio State. Ohio State doing what they typically do, and that's winning. They're up by 13. Purdue trying to get back in this. Third and five. 
Does he have enough for the first? Yes. Good play there. Needing two touchdowns. Going with the play action. He's got the big tight end, number 88. Buckeye defense looking to buck down here. And wow. Well, it all comes down to this. Boilermakers fourth and goal over the middle. He got so close, yet not quite enough. It shows just how costly it was not scoring a touchdown last drive. Because look, it's first and goal. They got down here again, and a touchdown would have given the lead. It's like the definition of trying hard or doing the most, but it's just not coming up with the dub. Let me be quiet for one second. I might be eating my words here. They recover the onside kick and just have a huge strike down the sideline. And no, no, I was not going to watch an onside kick. I have never seen one actually successfully recover. Really? Okay, they're going to choose to chew clock rather than burn that last time out. That was odd. Third and six, five seconds left on the clock. He's going for a big play. He had a guy with a step, but it was really underthrown, so intercepted. Like I said, doing the most but not enough. Purdue literally did everything except get the dub and Ohio State walks away with a victory. I mean, look at Kyle McCord didn't do really anything. He got player of the game. Was a fun ride. Now Ohio State is just looking really strong. Will anyone be able to step in and save the continent from Ohio State's reign? Wisconsin will only land on Penn State or Ohio State. So if it's to the left, we'll go Penn State. If it's to the right, Oregon. Arrow says to the right. So that's gonna be Oregon. Can someone explain to me what's going on here? Why is Wisconsin so good as Oregon is at first and goal, but they're down by 19. Wisconsin is just cracked in this simulation, but hey, Jordan James up the gut, touchdown Ducks. As soon as I said that, the Ducks are now back and looking for more points. Touchdown. Ducks are going back-to-back -back scores here. It all started with Jordan James scoring the first touchdown, eating the poison ball, getting sent to the gulag. Then Wisconsin goes three and out. Ducks score again. So we're back into a ball game here. It said Tanner Mordecai threw for five touchdown passes. Well, I don't know what the last couple drives have been for these guys as they've just given the Ducks a golden ticket to get right back in it. Newest quarterback for the Denver Broncos, Bo Nix, looking to make a statement. And yes, he found the running back, Noah Whittington, in their first and goal. Dude, I was just talking about how Wisconsin's always blowing people out, and the Ducks all of a sudden are back in it. That's stuff you can't make up. Now they're going to spike it and cost themselves a down. Talk about the stakes. Fourth and goal. Are you going to climb the Wisconsin mountain and beat these guys? No. Wisconsin steps up last second unbelievable there goes that team again wisconsin wins oregon came all the way back but couldn't finish at the last drive duck fans in pain as they're a one and done in this imperialism trust me i feel you my team was one and done in the asia conquest with the remaining teams we're gonna go with minnesota sending the golden gophers to the right to the right and up a bit is ohio state and these guys will not stop getting tested they're gonna have to prove their way all the way through the continent hey golden gopher fans how we feeling 62 7 you hanging in there this imperialism in this game too there's been a lot of decisive wins and it's making me think, what is the best conference in college football? I mean, I'm biased. I'm a Big 12 guy. And there were a lot of close matchups in imperialism. Let me know what you think in the comments section. But I mean, for Ohio State here in this game, they got all their backups and their mothers in the game right now. Like, what are we even doing out here? This is a blowout galore. And on this somber note from Minnesota fans, uh, my condolences to you guys. Our RIP. This was a scary sight to see in this game. Ohio State did not hold back whatsoever. Kyle McCord, even the transfer quarterback that left Ohio State, deal dealt up six touchdowns against the Gophers. What does that say about Minnesota, man? I'm not going to lie. I've lost count of how many games Ohio State's won to this point, so I'll just have to count it back at the end. Maryland has a chance to show what they got, and the Terrapins are going to have to go to the right. This is a South America first. Maryland, UCLA. Maryland got a chance to show the world what they could do, and UCLA stole the show. Third and nine for the Terps. They just want to get anything going as they haven't been able to do all game. Dropping back, Talia going across the middle. What a snag by Jashawn Jones. It is definitely far too late in this one though as there's just nothing going. Lie to, lot to with that drop on Talia in the last play. That man went first pick for defensive players in the draft this year. So it leads me to believe UCLA could stand their own potentially in this run for imperialism. First and goal, what are the Terps gonna do? They're gonna throw it out to the third string running back who just gets decked and fumbled it and that is why he's a third string folks seeing if talia can do anything special here with the remaining time last couple chances here with only 20 seconds left he's found a man first and goal well to me this is another case of a team that came back but started the comeback far too late 
yeah, they scored that touchdown with five seconds in the game. There was nothing else they could do. So UCLA, Logan Laioa, player of the game, special teams, two total touchdowns. That's funny. Maryland gone, UCLA survives. Couple teams in here we're yet to see, like uh, Michigan, for example. But instead, we see Wisconsin again. Makes sense. This is getting a little funny, guys. We've seen a lot of Ohio State and Wisconsin. And that era wanted to see two powerhouses go at it as Ohio State and Wisconsin are set to square off. Wisconsin picked a bad time to go quietly because they have been killing people up to this point instead the other powerhouse will reign supreme as they're up by 18 let's not count out the badgers quite yet third and goal for tanner up the middle the running back scores touchdown both teams earned their first string running backs long ago because they've won many games and ohio state gets the ball back again not only did wisconsin score first they've lost their running back to the poison ball cord looking to finish it off and it is easy peasy badger fans let's celebrate the run that you guys had Unfortunately, Ohio State is too much. Even in garbage time, Ohio State was padding it on. I mean, seriously, 54 points. Like, who's going to stop that? Marvin Harrison Jr. on the ground and through the air. Wisconsin just wanted to hang with the big boys, but it wasn't right for them. Now Ohio State's got Brazil and all the way down to the southern coast. Cooking up the next one, it's Penn State back on deck. Many directions will point them to Ohio State, and yeah, it did. Nittany Lions, Buckeyes up next. What do we have here? What do we have here? Penn State, Nittany Lions up by four and connecting on a big one across the middle. It looks like the Nittany Lions aren't satisfied as they're hurting up to the line. They want some tempo football. They want to get some additional points for insurance as Drew Aller's back in there healthy in this one and doing what he's got to do. This is the first time that anyone's really threatened Ohio State. But trust me, you're going to need to sustain this offense in the fourth quarter because Ohio State's always cooking up something. But we've talked enough about Ohio State in the last like six games or so. And oh my goodness, he picked that off. When your defense steps up, you have to return the favor on offense, and we don't. This time, Drew Aller and the boys are much more aggressive. They're not punting it back. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth and five, except they want to choose some clock first. Let's see what they can cook up here. They need the play to get the yards, and the slip screen is short. Only a minute left, so any scores here in this time of the game, it's going to be decisive. Big sack from Hakeem Beacon on that last one, and it looks like it's going to be a fourth down, as one would imagine Buckeyes going for it on fourth down. Bad play call. It's turned over. This is not a drill. I repeat, not a drill. First down, that's going to cook this game out. Victory formation for the the Nittany Lions, the tables have turned, and Ohio State, who's won like five games up to this point, is out of here. And as you can tell, they're celebrating like they just won the whole shift. Spread the news, Ohio State is no more in South America. And with that result, let's see who's next. USC. Trojans gonna have to go down and to the left. And since it's left and down, not down or to the right, that makes me believe it's a USC-Michigan matchup. First time we're seeing Michigan or the Trojans. And since it's their first game, just like everyone else and how they had to do it, their third string running backs are in. Meaning for Michigan, no Blake Corum. That's going to be tough. JJ McCarthy has thrown four interceptions in this game, but he's looking to right all the wrongs. And he can do that in a big way if he can find a way into the end zone. Third and 11, halfback draw up the middle with the running back. That's a big run. First and goal, Wolverines with an option there the keeper for donovan edwards touchdown now donovan won't see the light a day again let's check in on how caleb williams and the trojans are faring on third down couldn't get enough quick side note these are not my ratings but college football revamps ratings and i noticed caleb williams has a lower overall than jj mccarthy jj is a 90 overall caleb williams is 86 and so I, they're close they're good they're both great quarterbacks don't get me wrong but I mean realistically there's a reason Caleb Williams went round one pick one I mean he's got a lot of intangible talent need the touchdown three points will not do and Caleb Williams has a play action wide open Relique Brown for six they're gonna take the lead with 47 seconds left this extra point is good they have a one point cushion 40 seconds in this one what is it gonna be Michigan still has all their timeouts opting to not use one oddly here I mean you have three of them I don't know why you wouldn't start using them because they're just killed like 10 seconds o'clock and counting hello jj mccarthy anyone there michigan wolverine coaching staff harbaugh anyone someone come save this man what is going on michigan fans you've got to be beside yourself your team just sold you imperialism i don't know what they're doing they're smoking something that i don't know what's out there 
They choose to snap it with no time left, and it's game. Michigan Wolverines, one and done in South America imperialism. I don't know what the heck that was at the end. Well, okay then, Michigan is defeated. Imperialism is funny like this sometimes. There's no Michigan, Ohio State, no Oregon. So honestly, it's anyone's game still as we're gonna head down to the left. Therefore, Iowa, USC up next. 17 apiece here for USC and the Hawkeyes in this defense is always known to be pretty good. Current problem for Iowa though is the offense when are we going to get this thing moving because a stellar defense can only keep you in the game for so long you need to get points at the end of the day and how did that just complete receiver in motion Caleb Williams here taking the snap on third and 16 did they got enough fast interference penalty declined fourth down yo wait a minute they declined it so they're going to get a chance at a field goal would you have done that that puts a lot of trust in a practically non-existent offense here Cade having a rough day at the helm and he's throwing for about 40 percent completion but that's a big completion my my goodness did not expect to see him just come out and uncork that one now it's really up to the team are they trying to get the field goal or a touchdown to win it i say you go for the win gun empty here will the hawkeyes prevail he has a man and that's six six yards they still want the big six and maybe this is the play first and goal anyone gonna step up as a hero or is this a long drawn way of getting the three e or i'm sorry or none of the above throw the game ending pick offense woes woes and blows that's the story of the offense for iowa man they couldn't get it done it was right in their lap sayonara late in this one iowa's out of here they're a one and done and we're at the end just four teams left and one of them is yet to play and it's landing on that team northwestern's first opponent in south america ucla bruins northwestern hanging tough in this one down by eight just selling the bag on that handoff not sure why you hand off like that when you're trying to win the game but ucla in this case that's a good handoff because they get the big first down will the Bruins be able to sustain this lead this drive will go a long way in showing what will happen Northwestern a couple solid pieces here and there and a couple guys that helped out in my DM video when I created a college football team shout out to Kenny Soares and the team but that field goal from UCLA is going to get him up by 11. Third and two, number two, looking for an open target. It's out of bounds, fourth down. Ben Bryant and the Cats going for it. It's a little play action. He's got an open man across the middle. Back to the second, fourth down on the same drive. Quick slant, and he's got it. Wow, so against odds here, they've converted on two fourth downs, and they're still alive in this thing, and put a pin in it. They are no longer alive. They're dead. Powers didn't even want to chance it in case there was somehow, some way, there was a 12-point play that existed on a punt return. He kicked it out of bounds, and it's wrapped. So UCLA survives, of course, and moves on to one of the final stages in imperialism. Northwestern, thanks for hanging out, and thanks for playing. The final three it is getting down to crunch time. UCLA is going to have to prove it. UCLA will play USC. So it's a SoCal showdown before the championship game against Penn State. Wow, I am a little surprised by this. USC up by 25. I did think USC could pull this one out, but decisively, wow. Never any question or doubt as who was going to win this one. USC USC's got a date for continental supremacy. It's going to be USC versus Penn State. So much on the line. Will USC claim South America and compete at the next level for global domination? Came a long way with 18 teams in the beginning, and here we are now down to the final two. Remember, you got to go in the comment section and let me know which 99 overall campus legends will be joining the victor of this next game. Both teams going balls to the wall here for South America. 28 28. Everything is on the line, and it comes down to Caleb Williams taking off to scramble. Touchdown. Caleb gets the lead but he just hurt himself with the poison ball. Therefore, Miller Moss is gonna have to step in and sustain the lead. Miller Moss won't have to worry about it too much if the defense is doing what they have to do, and they're going crazy on Bo, as you see Drew Aller's already knocked out. Miller Moss facing a third and 15 on his first drive with the pig skin, and what is he doing? The IQ there, he should've just thrown that away. Third and four for Bo, he's gonna step up and keep it. What a run for the first. Not sure why Drew Aller keeps getting knocked out of this game, but Bo had to step up in one of the early 
earlier sessions too. So far, Miller Moss has been a massive step back for the offense. Backup quarterback versus backup quarterback for the championship game in all of South America glory. Bo seems more adept at shaking off the sack and getting back to work. The clock just under four minutes, number 10, running like he's got bricks in his shoes. Bo says, that's all good. I'll slip it out to the 10. I think it's the brick guy and he gets the first down anyway. The reason the man probably has less acceleration than usual is because they're in this up-tempo snap a playoff almost every few seconds. Can Bo lead this team forward? Read option, stuffed. Trojan defense needs a stop and they're not gonna get one into first and goal one yard to the end zone. DeAndre Lambert Smith, the money man on that last play and hello, number 14, what's your name? Big pick, big player, special team, special player. Bo's not gonna have too many more chances at this rate. The defense for USC is really strong and he's gonna need a miracle. T minus 57 seconds and Bo's got his connection over midfield. Here we go. Bo looking once more for someone. He's just gonna step up and do it himself. Good play. After a false start, it's third down. He's going to step up and take it once more. First down. Good run. Honestly, I don't have too many complaints about Bo's game. I mean, it, Drew Allard, it's unfortunate he's hurt, but Bo's been pretty solid. That conversion was only good enough to buy him one more play. You got to go to the end zone. You're out of clock, and he's wide open. Are you kidding me? Time expired. That was nuts, and the extra point is good. We're going OT. Third and four, you want the touchdown. You do not want to settle for three after all of this, and they get it. Christian Driver, touchdown. Trojan fans you're probably trembling right now because we've seen nothing but a delayed and sloppy offense with the new quarterback like no kidding that was actually Miller Moss's first completion of the entire game he was in for like the whole fourth quarter didn't even complete a pass until that point so yeah talk about a time to step up more like now come on baby let's see if he has another trick to pull out of the bag of tricks and he's going for it and it's intercepted number four Penn State just about seals it here all they got to do is kick a field goal. No friggin' way. Kalen King picked that off, but my system glitched. So we're into another round of OT here where they're giving USC the ball back. Nittany Lion fans were done dirty here. This is unbelievable. And Miller Moss is playing like a new man with new life. And it glitched again. So... Penn State never got to see the field. Unfortunately, I can't let this stand. I mean, Penn State actually just got hosed. They should have won. So the only way I feel comfortable about accepting that result is to sim another game, have them go head to head once more. USC needs to show that they can actually win the game fair and square without a hose job from just a bug in college football revamp. So um, that's what we're doing. We're going to sim it out. You and me, we're watching it together. We're seeing who comes out on top. And that ultimately is going to be the, the victor of South America. And it looks like USC is showing that they are capable of doing it with or without the bug. So, okay, I guess that's just the way it crumbles. Best two out of three just to ensure that the result we saw was really legit. And USC is up early in the second quarter. Penn State is coming back into it, though. Regardless what happens here, I mean, it just feels like, you know, either team is hosed one way or another. It's like... USC is proving they can hang, they can they can win the game just as equally as Penn State. But Penn State honestly should have won that game that we were watching in overtime. So it's going to be another OT one here. And it looks like USC wins it again. So 49-46, they prove in this best of three format that I just simmed that they are the champ. I had to do all that to ensure that USC was the South America champion after all, and you know what? They got it. Okay, now I'm gonna show the global map, so if you haven't checked out Antarctica, Europe, or Asia, go check out those vids because I'm gonna reveal the grand map just so we can get an update of where everyone's at. With USC coming in and claiming South America, they're gonna be going up against Hawaii from Europe, Arizona from Asia, and Ole Miss in Antarctica. We still have a couple more to go before all out world war so hit that subscribe button turn on the post notification bell so you're alerted when the next imperialism drops in the meantime go ahead and soak up any of these videos